Welcome to another Build in Progress video everyone, I'm your host Jaro. Today I'd like to start talking to you about my new experimental Explosive Aero Raider build for Path of Exile 315 Expedition League. If you are interested in the full build, uh, as I develop it further and as I take it to endgame Atlas maps, please like the video so that I know that I should bother releasing part 2 of this guide rather than move on to something else. There are always more fun builds to experiment with in Path of, Path of Exile and as you know I'm doing it very regularly. So let's begin. Explosive Arrow is a ranged bow attack sp skill that you get around level 28. It's quite fun to use and very powerful especially if you scale up your elemental damage and fire damage specifically. It shoots an arrow that sticks into an enemy or a wall that it hits and then it explodes soon thereafter doing fire damage to any anything around it. I've leveled this ranger using basic but very very powerful skill in its own right, Caustic Arrow. I can absolutely see how one would just stick with Caustic Arrow all the way through to the end game, but that would be a different build altogether. For leveling I always use Tabula Rasa 6 linked sockets robe, uh, because you know it's very convenient and it gives me maximum opportunities for main skill su support. In the case of this build I've actually already upgraded my basic Tabul Rasa to Ashrand, which is a decent tunic um, that adds fire damage support that we could absolutely benefit from in this build and it increases my evasion rating further and gives other very useful useful properties, certainly better than Tabul Rasa. I basically think that Ashrand is among the best items one could ever use for this particular build, at least as a casual Path of Exile player who doesn't want to spend an absolute fortune on something hypothetically better, but also that would be ridiculously a lot more expensive on the community market. My explosive arrow skill is supported by greater multiple projectile support, Mirage Archer support, because I love running around with an imaginary friend who keeps shooting volleys of arrows at enemies. Faster attack support for obvious reasons. Inspiration support, because I am having a little bit of issues with mana in this particular build uh, at the moment, as the build it's a build in progress, it's not optimized yet, so reducing the mana cost of the skill and gaining inspiration charges is a very very good thing. And finally, I'm also kind of stuck and stuck is the key word here with Vicious Projectile support. It's not the best absolutely optimized skill for this build uh, because it's not a chaos ba based uh, build. However, it still increases the projectile attack damage, which is a good thing. And yeah, I didn't have anything better than this skill to put in this slot early on. And Ashrand at the moment is already giving us added level 10 fire damage support. So I would have used that perhaps um, instead, but I didn't. So that's just what it is. Additionally to that, other notable gems is that for movement I'm using Withering, Sp Withering Step. Withering Step is just bound to my left mouse key. It gives me phasing and it is it is increasing the speed of my run. So that's, that's fantastic. It allows me to go through enemies um, unhindered. I'm also using Second Wind support to reduce cooldown on, of my movement skills and it's also bound to dash, just normal dash skill, giving it extra charge with the help of second wind support and allowing me to go up and down the ledges here and there. I am using inspiration support here as well because mana is an issue like I said and anything that actively use mana I'm trying to counter that, uh, that effect. I am using shrapnel ballista, a wonderful skill that you get early on, the totems that help you kill enemies, especially those that are resistant to fire damage, because this helps you add physical damage to your attacks where you need to, it helps on bosses very very much so. It's supported by volley support, just extra arrows are always nice, and in this particular case it also has elemental proliferation support. Look, it's kind of pointless in this particular case, but you can't expect much from a build of a character that right now is at level 54. So it is a build in progress, not everything is optimized yet. Some gems, for the lack of a better word, I'm just leveling them uh, while I can. 
Um, what else? I'm running Anger Aura because Anger adds fire damage. It's pa fairly expensive because it reserves 50% of my already fairly scarce mana. I am suffering from it, but it adds quite a bit of extra fire damage, which is why I'm running with this for now. And Ice Golem, honestly, I was given it as a quest reward, as you would be as you're leveling. And at the moment, I'm just running it for increased accuracy and increased critical strike chance. Because why not? I simply don't have anything better to use. For the weapon, I'm using Death's Harp for no particular extra reason than just simply having a very good bow. I simply had it in my arsenal. I didn't buy it specially. I'm not particularly advocating for it, but the bow attacks are firing an additional arrow. That's not a bad thing, right? For the helmet, I'm using the Peregrine. Peregrine is one of my favorite ranger kind of and dexterity build uh, based avoidance based builds um, helmets it gives accuracy rating it increases armor and evasion it gives lightning resistance and it also leeches some damage as mana and in this particular case i already said that i'm kind of suffering from not having enough mana same thing for leeching life and mana i'm using the womb's mold the leather belt so this works pretty well other stats are negligible and pretty bad for this build but I'm simply not having a better one, better uh, item right now for this slot. For gloves, I'm using Lactonial Caress. It for increased attack speed and increased cast speed. Uh, increased attack speed mainly we're interested in. It reduces maximum mana, but it has 10% chance to give me a power, frenzy or endurance charge on kill, which is adding to quite a bit of damage. Uh, I haven't simmed it properly, but I assume so, and uh, it's, it's a good thing. The Wanderlust is wonderful shoes, everyone knows about them, uh, for leveling especially. Um, because you can't be frozen and your mana regeneration rate is increased massively and you ho have also fairly massively increased movement speed by 20%. So I probably don't need to say more. For the passive skill tree, we are obviously starting as a ranger and we I will put the build in progress link into the description of this um, of this uh, video so please take a look at that paste bin is there for you take a look at that what I'm doing here is I'm ultimately heading towards master Fletcher via the most optimal path that kind of brings me closer to nodes such as thick skin I am contemplating taking wind dancer as well for defensive layers I have already taken lethality because it increases some damage with the bows. I am going to definitely take some increased weapon, the elemental weapon damage, perhaps even taking primeval force. Um, and definitely for avoidance based builds, you cannot go around taking acrobatics and phase acrobatics if you want to live. Some increases here to elemental damage with forces of nature and with revenge of the hunted. And I also went all the way up here to take extra life pool and to also increase elemental damage here with, as well as a few other um, useful stats for this build along the way. Once again, this is just a level 54 build, so not much has happened just yet. It's a build in progress. For Ascendancy, some people for ranger based builds, they uh, for Raider Ascendancy, they go with Way of the Poacher and then they go towards Avatar of the Slaughter for obvious reasons because they rely on increase of their movement speed and evasion rating and attack speed based on frenzy charges. And as you just saw in the passive skill tree, I started taking some occasional nodes, nodes that are boosting my capacity for frenzy charges. So I'm definitely going that way. However, for survivability and to make my life easier, I decided at the moment of recording of this video at least, I decided to go towards Quartz Infusion first to increase my dodge chance for both physical and spell hits and to have permanent phasing. Permanent phasing obviously allows me to go through enemies unhindered and that can mean life and death for some skinny avoidance based build. So that's my logic. But my next step would be at level 55, I would definitely go towards Way of the Poacher and then I will top this out with Avatar of the Slaughter. If it comes to the fact that I'm stuck with this build, which I'm enjoying quite a lot, um, enough to run the Labyrinth for the fourth time, which doesn't happen frequently for me, in all honesty, because I am not an end game mapper, then I would also finish off this branch with Avatar of the Veil. So at the end of the day, I am intending to go this way and this way take it for what it is that's at least my intention now for pantheon 
at the moment it's a leveling build obviously i don't have all of the gods opened so i am at the moment using soul of Aberath as the as the as the minor god because being unaffected by burning ground is massive it helps you a lot but as you know my builds i typically go towards ralakesh he's not unlocked yet ralakesh would be over here to reduce my chances to be killed by bleeding and i would also probably go for either solaris or lunaris depending on how i'm doing against uh, the mobs the general map clearing which i don't think is going to be an issue for me so probably it's not going to be lunaris it's probably going to be solaris for the major god that is the intention and that's about it my friends for now so this is a build in progress the video ended up being longer than i intended it to be but treat it as a part one of this mini guide if you're interested to follow the journey of this ranger of this raider build please like the video it takes you one second but it tells me that you're interested in this particular build otherwise i'm like well if no one is interested why would i bother i can just play whatever makes me have fun i could have some other build in progress which i do um and subscribe to the channel if you generally like these occasional videos at the moment i've been quite busy so my videos have slowed down a tiny bit to about one video a week but you're still getting your solid um, word from gyro and some um, extra entertainment in terms of pathway exile and other gaming once a week so subscribe if you haven't already show your support that is very much still appreciated and i will talk to you next time thanks very much bye for now